Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So today we are going to talk about one very interesting thing that we always check that how to crack SD interviews, but this interview is for who are actually a hiring manager and you are trying to build up a team of SD or automation engineers. So what are the different things that uh, you should look for uh, for an SDET point of view or automation QA point of view. So uh, I was an SDET manager and I've been like hiring a lot of SDET and automation engineers uh, from last couple of years in my previous companies also that we were doing a lot of hiring for automation engineers and SDET from different companies for different positions. So number of things that I have observed in the industry in multiple organizations when I was talking to different people I observed that okay, there is a big failure when they hire SDE or automation engineers. There is a big problem in the hiring also. So I would like to advise, or I would like to point out some important critical points over here. So the first thing is that if you are uh, going to set up a new team, you don't have any framework. Application is very new, and then you have a scope of uh, you know automation with respect to UI and API or uh, uh, app automation that you have. I think you should start hiring some really good people. Don't hire, let's say you're, you are having the requirement of five SDETs or three SDETs. Don't hire all the five SDETs at the same position. You should maintain the hierarchy like SDET 1, SDET 2 or two SDET or two level or maybe SDET 3 or maybe one SDET architect level or maybe some senior position, a staff SDET or principal SDET automation engineer that you can hire for that. Otherwise, what will happen that everybody is on the same page, all these five SDETs are the same page they won't be able to take a decision. The competition will always be there that, okay, yeah, why should I listen to this guy? Why should I listen to this SDET, right? Because I'm also having the same position, same package and uh, a similar kind of knowledge that I have. So you should maintain that hierarchy. That is very much important. I have seen many companies, they hire five SDET, all SDET 2 or SDET 3 or maybe SDET 1 or 2. And then they all are juniors and nobody is going to take a decision. No proper framework, no core automation libraries, nothing. And then they just... Uh, do blunders and then it's not a successful automation strategy and uh, not a successful automation plan also they don't create it and then after six months somebody is leaving and then and then again back to square and uh, there is no big advantage that you are getting after hiring after five as dead and after putting a lot of resources money time and everything and still for organization point of view for a team point of view what exactly you're getting nothing in terms of automation or not much in terms of automation Second thing is that if you are having the second use case, if you're already having some, uh, you know, automation framework is in place or uh, you just need to enhance that particular framework or a lot of uh, new requirements are coming in future, new pages got added, new APIs got added, and then you are going to launch a mobile application also very soon in the market. In that case, I think you should start hiring some really good smart people who can actually uh, you know, convert those manual test cases or regression test cases into automation. They are having some really good knowledge about that. Uh, about automation and then you know, on the basis of that you should hire that you should have a clear plan that okay yeah this is the existing framework that we have and the existing framework is also in a really good uh, uh, condition and then i think who can uh, a person you can you can hire who can actually take this particular uh, framework to the next level or make it more generic and add more and more test cases on top of that which can be handled by other team members also or other uh, you know teams also in your organization this is the second mid-level case. Third level case is that your framework is absolutely fine. The only maintenance work is done and then existing as dead guy or existing as dead people are leaving your company because of uh, uh, no automation work left okay, in that particular project or in that particular company. So in that case, if you're hiring a rock star who is really good in automation, who is really good in SDET, then in that case, uh, you're doing a big blunder over there because you are hiring some really good guy who is actually expert in SDET expert in automation and then uh, and then you don't have uh, you know good amount of work left or maybe after six months or after one year some automation work will be there in the future and then in that case uh, there is no guarantee that okay that as that person that you are hiring because he's having he or she is having very good you know aspiration in terms of automation having some really good plans learning a lot of new things in the market and always up to date because he's a rock star right in terms of automation so better you hire a mid you know a mid knowledge guy who's having some really good testing skills really good testing mindset but uh, average in SDET automation who can take care about your existing framework uh, running the test cases publishing the report and then any failures are there fixing those uh, script and uh, and uh, maintenance of the framework is very much required in that case so in that case i think uh, a person who's having the mid level of knowledge in terms of automation you can hire that 
otherwise you are doing a big blunder over there once again this is like very very important thing where that's why you always face these problems that after six months or after three four months people are leaving your company leaving your project and then again they are demanding that okay we are not getting any enough uh, work in terms of uh, you know in terms of automation and they will always complain that okay you hired me for this position you gave me this package also because these people are not only looking for the package they are looking for the good work as well so that is the main reason behind that uh, that's why they don't uh, you know they don't uh, uh, sit in the same company for a longer period of time right and the most important thing in all three use cases is that the testing mindset please don't hire a person who is actually only and only looking for automation work the main fundamental behind all the s data is that end of the day you are all are you all are qa you all are testers so the good testing mindset good testing core skills they should know when to automate how to automate what are different tools and technologies when to use and how to use that they should have the research mindset that okay yeah it's not like okay every time for any application i'm going to use selenium they should look for some other applications also or some other uh, tools also available in the market and then you, they should always be ready to learn new tools and technologies they should have a good devops mindset they should have good programming background like that another thing is that i would request that uh, uh, please don't compromise in terms of testing that is like very very much needed don't look for five interviews that you are taking or five rounds that you are taking only for programming only for automation framework test ng selenium cucumber that you are taking it but what about your testing core skills if they are they don't understand the product if they don't un uh, understand the feature of the feature of the application in that case they cannot automate those things as well so that is very much required in that case the basic core skills like should be there then some people they always argue that okay no i am the automation engineer why should i learn uh, testing skills or uh, testing core uh, test cases i should i'm not going to write manual test cases i'm not going to execute manual test cases this mindset or this attitude is wrong actually you have to justify the testing over here software development engineer in test automation tester a tester or manual tester they all are coming in the same umbrella that is your testing umbrella or tester umbrella so i think you should focus you should at least take uh, one important round of interview <clears throat> maybe some test manager or test lead they can take how exactly this person is taking care about the testing taking care about all the scenarios uh, how exactly the bug finding abilities and everything and then testing core mindset is it really thinking in terms of uh, you know the testing uh, mindset or not uh, is it really thinking for the user point of view or customer point of view or not that's very important to know about it so i think uh, these are the important things i would like to say because a couple of people were asking that okay uh, navin can you please build up our team can you please uh, involve in our hiring process there are a lot of consultancies they are approaching me in terms of that so i always advise these things that okay yeah this is what you have to uh, you know you have to do whenever you are hiring one as jet or any automation qa engineer guy what do you think about it do you have any other extra point to add feel free to add in the comment section so that's all for this particular video guys i hope you liked it and please advise to your hiring manager and to your hr team also just to concentrate on these important points what do you think about it and then if you have any extra points to add feel free to add in the comment section i'll see you in the next video till then take care and god bless you all